The subject matter of this film was chosen by our National Board of Selection. Dr. Frederick Patterson, President, Tuskegee Institute. Reverend Marshall Shepard, Recorder of Deeds, Philadelphia. William J. Trent, Jr., Executive Director, United Negro College Fund. Willard S. Townsend, International President, United Transport Service Employees. C.C. Spaulding, President, North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company. Claude A. Barnett, Director, Associated Negro Press. How do you do? This is another in the series of motion pictures presented by Liggett and Myers, makers of Chesterfield cigarettes. Today's subject is the Negro in business and industry, a topic of interest to us all. I should like for you to meet two distinguished gentlemen who are highly qualified to discuss this subject. Mr. Horace Suddeth, president of the National Negro Business League, and Mr. Willard S. Townsend, international president of the United Transport Service Employees. As part of a wage-earning population of 60 millions, Many hundreds of thousands of Negroes are engaged in wide variety of occupations. We're gaining in job security and gaining in job opportunities commensurate with our individual abilities. Mr. Barnett, I would like for our audience to see some practical evidence upon which my statements are based. Fine. In all parts of the country, the Negro is taking his place in the skilled arts of labor, in plant and factory, in the many industrial testing and research laboratories, and in the business offices of banks, insurance companies, and other concerns. Many skilled welders in the large industrial centers are Negroes. For these jobs, at least a year's training is required. Those with high mechanical aptitudes train for the big pay inspection jobs. These machines are expensive, and the men who run them must be efficient and careful to a high degree. Amicable agreements are worked out in meetings like this one between Burlington Railroad Management and an employee's labor group. In another meeting, union leaders discuss problems relating to employment in the laundry department of the Pullman Company. Women these days are interested in the durability of a fabric as well as its beauty and style. Already large numbers of women enjoy careers as executives and white collar workers. Better job opportunities mean better living conditions all over America. Women hold high executive positions in some of the nation's largest department stores. This woman is credit manager. Politeness and a pleasant disposition, together with a head for figures, make some women ideal bank tellers. One of the first Negroes in America to be employed as an engineer by a public utility, Jesse Temple, Jr. of St. Louis, thinks engineering offers a real opportunity for young men and women looking for successful careers. Sales representatives for national firms call on thousands of small businesses owned and operated by Negroes. Typical of these salesmen is Walter White, Jr., whose picture appears in his company's advertising. Here you see him advising a customer how to take advantage of his company's advertising. White is only one of thousands employed by his company in the making and selling of cigarettes. The newsreel cameraman, working on assignment for a national organization, finds it exciting work. He films a street scene in St. Louis. In one of the largest mail order houses in the world, personnel manager Aura Higgins finds many opportunities to place people in good jobs. Mr. Townsend, I think we'll all agree 
that you have demonstrated the widening participation of the Negro in American industry. Now, Mr. Sutton, as president of the National Negro Business League, what do you think of our future in other aspects of American business? It is very obvious, Mr. Barnett, that the number of businesses operated and owned by Negroes is constantly growing. There are, for instance, Mr. Barnett, life insurance companies owned and operated by Negroes uh, with total assets amounting to more than 175 millions of dollars. There are also 14 banks owned and operated by Negroes which have assets and resources in excess of 33 millions of dollars. The many banks owned and operated by Negroes represent an important step on the way to economic independence. Those receiving the benefits of their efficient services include businessmen, farmers, and working men and women. Courteous trained employees give information to those who seek advice on financial matters. Another evidence of economic progress is the number of insurance companies owned and operated by members of the race. Supreme Liberty Life of Illinois is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Truman Gibson Sr. is president. The largest business organization in the South, owned and operated by Negroes, is the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company at Durham, home of Chesterfield. President C.C. Spaulding has led his company through half a century of continuous progress. Another field that has been rapidly expanding is the savings and loan business. There has been a record growth of such firms during the past 15 years. And at the present time, there are 27 Negro managed savings and loan associations in America, with assets totaling approximately $20 million. They help with housing problems and frequently lend aid in financing business enterprises. Many thousands of independent business establishments have found prosperity in this country. It would be difficult to name a business or profession in which the Negro has failed to find opportunity. In local business leagues, the men pull together for the economic progress and continued development of all. Ray Robinson is a man of many enterprises, all successful. A man who has combined art and business on a large scale is Paul R. Williams of California, nationally known architect. From his drawing board have come plans for many famous buildings and fine homes for Hollywood stars. One of the most influential privately owned enterprises is the Pittsburgh Courier, largest Negro newspaper in America with a circulation over 300,000. Publisher, Mrs. Van, keeps in close contact with editor-in-chief Bill Nunn. 16 editions are released weekly. Other important newspapers include the Chicago Defender, the Afro-American, the Amsterdam News, and the Norfolk Journal and Guide. The society section of the Pittsburgh Courier is handled by women like editor Toki. She is an important figure in the feminine world. In addition to the editorial staff, the many publications in the United States offer employment to scores of highly skilled workers, teletypists, typesetters, and so on. These publications have double value. They keep their readers informed and furnish employment to thousands of workers. The field of radio is opening up. In Atlanta is the only Negro-owned and operated radio station, WERD, owned by J.B. Blayton and his son, J.B. Jr. The popular entertainer, Graham Jackson, was a favorite of the late President Roosevelt. Jackson played for the president both at the White House and at Warm Springs, Georgia. This artist broadcasts by remote control from his little White House home, a replica of the original. The city fathers have named the street on which he lives White House Drive. Popular disc jockeys like Al Benson and Ralph Cooper are making radio history. Let's listen to this disc jockey's choice. Sound of Chesterfield. Sound of Chesterfield. Buy a pack of Chesterfields and do it today. Thank you, Mr. Suddeth and Mr. Townsend, for your participation and assistance today. 
Ladies and gentlemen, through the aid of these two distinguished guests, we, you and I, have been able to learn much about the position of the Negro in business and industry and of the constantly growing opportunities for members of our group. I am sure you all know that the makers of Chesterfields have made these films as a public service. And because of their interest in our welfare and their long-standing friendship, we say, smoke our brand, Chesterfield. <laughs>